How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. Today I'm going to review this Golden Mate 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery. In the battery manuals, it always says you can put four of these in series and four in parallel as well. So a total of 16. I would not recommend to put them in series because after using them for about six months or so, the voltage of each of the battery is going to drift a little bit away from each other. And this drift can cause problems later on, such as over discharge or overcharging of one of the cells. So the battery manufacturer would actually recommend you to take everything apart, charge them all up to full, connect a pair of them together, wait 24 hours, connect another one, wait 24 hours, and so on and so forth until all of them are equalized again, and then you can connect them in series again. To me, these work well in a 12 volt system, but if you're gonna go with a 48 volt system, you absolutely need to put in a battery balancer. So with that said, let's test this battery out. Typically, lithium iron phosphate batteries of this size can do 100 amps continuous. This one particular says it can do up to 200 amps for less than five seconds. Usually what happens is it can go over, but it's gonna overheat some stuff. The temperature sensors inside it's gonna sense this and then shut everything down based on that. So the five seconds really depends on the ambient temperature as well. So today we're gonna test this. I have a 3000 watt inverter here so it can pull more than 200 amps out of this. I do have to say that these cables, they're only two gauge so it's not meant to do a sustained 200 amps. I have connected two loads which are power stations and I can vary the load so that I can reach that 200 amps. Let's turn it on. 29 amps so far. I'm gonna increase the load. We're at 170 amps. Let's increase it further. 200 amps. Okay, a few seconds it turned off. So I'm gonna turn this guy off. Let's do that again. 34, 60 amps, 90 amps, 180, 186. So it seems like you cannot reach 200 amps for that long. But this does prove that if you go over for a certain amount of time, it will cut itself off, which is a safety feature. Maximum continuous discharge is 100 amps. So it can sustain 100 amps the entire time until this whole thing is drained. Not all lithium iron phosphate batteries have Bluetooth connectivity. This one doesn't have a display or anything. The Bluetooth is built right inside. It says I have 95% capacity. The voltage on the app says 12.3 five over here is this 12.2 pretty similar here and you can even read all this remotely it's discharging at 100.1 amps my fluke meter says 100.8 amps this little cheapy thing says 100 amps so they're all pretty in line the power is minus 1239.9 watts and based on the current discharge rate it's going to say how long it's gonna last, which is 0.8 hours. At the bottom, there's a temperature reading either in Celsius or Fahrenheit. So I'm gonna go to Fahrenheit. It says MOS temperature, which are the FETs that's inside. Those are the solid state switching elements that connects the output to the battery. This entire 100 amps is running through those MOS transistors. And you can see it says 80.6 Fahrenheit. And as we discharged, this is gonna increase in temperature. You also have E1, which I'm not too sure where this is located. There's a T2 temperature, T3, T4, T5. At least one of them should probably be on the side of the cell pack. Another one should be right on the PC board rather than right next to the MOS transistors. Doing a discharge test in the entire battery at 100 amps, I got 102 amp hours. Charging at the recommended 20 amps, I was able to put in 101 amp hours into the battery. Battery. This took approximately five hours. Initially, I only got 100 amp hours. When you are drawing at 100 amps, it pulls the voltage down very low and that causes my inverter to shut down at a certain point. So in order to eke out a little bit more, I turned down the load to only maybe 20 amps or so and I got another two amp hours. And the mechanism to protect the cell is to not allow the voltage to get too low. So it cuts it off. That's why when you put a smaller load on it, it doesn't pull it down as much and therefore you can get more capacity out of it. In the app, I can't actually click on anything. It just shows one page of all this information. I'm gonna turn off the load now, pull these off. I have a lithium iron phosphate charger here. Let's start charging this. Notice that in the app, the discharge state is turned off now because we're not discharging it anymore. And let's see if the charge state is going to turn on when we connect this. 
Okay, it's charging at 20 amps and right away the charging turns on and it says it's charging at 19.1 amps, 257.9 watts, and then it'll take another 1.2 hours to fully charge it from the current state. Let's modulate this charging speed to let's say half. One, 10 amps only. And in the app, it says 10 amps also. So this is a very nice way to remote monitor your battery pack. If you installed it, let's say in somewhere hard to access, you can still see what's going on with each battery. That's enough testing just from the external of this thing. Let's open it up and see what's inside. There's a bit of residual energy in here. So we have to discharge that. We can measure it with the inrush function on this meter like this. 8.7 amps just flowed through instantaneously. The resistor value on this is pretty low. Actually, my leads are 0.1. So this is like a 0.1 ohm resistor. Now that it's discharged, I can check the inrush current when I reconnect the battery. Let's see. Right there, 11 amps. Now let's not use this pre-charge resistor to limit the current. I'm gonna discharge it. Watch out, it's gonna spark with no discharge resistor but then it still says only 11 amps. So I think the inrush might be too fast for this meter. That's interesting. Look at what happened to the bolt here. It kind of melted it a little bit from all that current. So you don't want to do that too often or else you're going to ruin your bolts. And then you look at the cable lug, it's charred a little bit. It didn't get damaged too badly at the metal level. At the top, there are eight screw plugs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm pretty happy about that so I don't have to pry anything open. I hope it's not glued together. Recycling signs over here. The other side. The bottom has actual rubber feet. Many times it's just plastic. Here's a look at the label, 100 amp discharge current made in China. Plugs make it IP67 rated, but then these rubber gaskets might wear out and it might become not IP67 rated. I can remove this little band. You don't have to have this on here. Don't try to open this thing up yourself because it's very dangerous. If you accidentally get these cables connected, there's no safety to prevent maximum discharge of the entire battery and things will explode. The seal usually goes around the screw holes because those could be entry points for water. We saw earlier that they're plugged up by these on this side. So even if water goes through here, it would effectively go through this hole, but that doesn't really go inside the main chamber. So we're okay. These plugs are most likely just to protect the screws so they don't sit in a pool of water and rust away. Notice right here, it says Golden Mate. So this is their own BMS, their own PC board. Usually they buy the Bluetooth module and solder it right onto their board. They doubled up two eight gauge cables that are 200 C capable on both the positive and negative side. And this feels kind of like silicone glue. So I think they put it on all these terminals here on all these screws to protect it from being opened. Interestingly though, they didn't put it on all the screws. These four over here are not glued up. The screws on the battery terminals are not glued up. There are four temperature sensors. It says NTC1 here for one pair of wire, NTC2, NTC3, and NTC4. The fact that they have four is really good. We'll see where they actually put these temperature sensors. So now let's just try to open this up. I think this is more for tamper resistant, so it's evident that you opened it. This is the B minus terminal and this is the B plus and there are four cells in series and they need tabs between each cell in order to balance those cells. So you have B1, B2 and B3. These points will be in between the cells and these will sense the voltage and do the battery balancing. It's interesting that it's a tab coming out of the battery itself soldered right onto the PCB. It seems like it doesn't want to come out until I remove these screws as well. So let me do that when I was removing these tabs, I don't want them to sort of get tilted and then it'll touch the heat sink here and it might short something out, especially the positive side, making sure nothing is shorted. There we go. These tabs connect to all these five cells and all the way down. And in turn, it gets connected to this pack and this pack gets connected over here to this pack. And then this pack connects to this one uh, through this interface here. And each of these cells looks like it's five across 
and probably five downs. However, I cannot see any markings on them right now. All of these tabs are most likely spot welded on. So I've decided to not open it further. I can't anyway because I tried. I think on the other side of this pack, it looks almost like this. So if they put a lot of glue, it's gonna have a lot of crevices to grip onto the whole pack. If they purposely rotated it so that the markings is on the other side, then it might be worth it to take it out to see what the marking says, see how big the cells are. Cells are like this long in each of them. I noticed the shrink wrap here is randomly rotated. That means if they printed something on the cells, we would see something somewhere along these 20 cells anywhere. So that means there's no markings on these cells. There's no use on disassembling this further. We can see from this crack that they use all these plating to spot weld onto here. And then I think what they did here is they spot welded a plate on this side and they can't actually spot weld two of these cells together. So they need some piece that connects them and then they fold them together. So they're able to have these back to back. Many times I see these batteries use prismatic cells. There's only four giant batteries in here, but this one chose to go with these cell type ones. And I think that's why they use four temperature sensors. One temperature sensor in each cell pack. So likely each of these temperature sensors is like right in the center of one of these comes with the user manual these lugs but in order to use them you need a proper crimper and you need the proper wire size to put in these lugs it says sc25-8 which means it can handle a 25 millimeter cross-section wire i'm measuring 7.2 millimeters in diameter and the ring hole should be eight millimeters slightly bigger 8.3 millimeters overall the capacity is verified the bluetooth works well the bottom is completely sealed there's no holes underneath or anything. Although it says it's splash proof, I would be a little worried about splashing water near these terminals at all. The top lid has a grommet that goes all the way around. So it makes it so that the water is not gonna go into the electronics. Overall, a pretty robust battery. If you guys are interested in this battery, check out my affiliate link down in the video description below. Thanks for watching this video. Until next time.